And the first point on the agenda is questions and issues, open forum. Does uh, anyone have anything to discuss? If not, then as usually we skip it. And the next point is open PRs and issues. Uh, does anyone want to discuss anything? I didn't pick any issues or PRs here this time, uh, but if anyone has something they want to discuss, we can go through it. Okay, if we continue like this, it will be fast meeting. But we have definitely some proposals which are opened. So first one is about the custom authentication in the Kafka brokers. And it looks like it has now three approvals from me, Paolo and Tom and nobody else commented and it's really open for quite some time. And so free approvals are enough for the proposal to be approved. So I suggest to call it approved and merge it. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Yeah, fine with me. Then the next one is service binding proposal. Do we have Kate here? We do. Yes, hello. So is there something what we should discuss? Should we talk about the name for, for the resource which we will use there? Yeah, I think um, I think the name is the last uh, piece that I could see, at least that um, seemed to be in contention for this one. Um, I think, I mean, uh, definitely the maintainers can let me know if there's things that I've missed, but I think a lot of the other comments I managed to respond to. So hopefully, apart from that, pro the proposal's kind of mostly there. I think the other thing that we'd need to discuss is um, like, once it's kind of agreed, is it going to be um, and like how is the project going to work in terms of Strimzy based or the operator SDK based? Um, but I don't know if that's a follow up discussion. Maybe you should start with the name. Okay. So I think we have discussed many options there, right? But it looks like the main ones were. Kafka connection, Kafka service. And the last one, which seemed to have some kind of agreement was Kafka access. So which one do we go with? Don't scream all over each other. Well, you know, my opinion was on Kafka service, but it seems that the others like Kafka access, where the access thing let me, let me think just about the old Microsoft access. So I think nobody else thinks about that anymore. Well, just me, at least. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I can live with it. We just let's vote for that. And I guess that the majority is okay with the Kafka access. The, the Kafka connection, you know, was just a kind of... Uh, confusing for me uh, with the, the Kafka connector, Kafka connect, Kafka connection. So too many things with this name. So I, I can yeah, live no, with I think Kafka access. Point. Yeah, I can live with Kafka access too. I'm happy with that. Okay, so Standa, Paul, Mikhail, Alesh. Uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm fine with Kafka access. Francesco, you can also have an opinion, definitely, if you want. I have no idea what the issue is about, so I'll go with Kafka access, which seems to be the general 
thing. Okay, then I guess that's the agreement on that one. What is it? Second December, go with Kafka access. Okay. So let's mark it here as well, maybe. So, sorry, Kate, what was the another point you mentioned? So I think the only other discussion point, which there was a, a little bit of discussion on one of the threads, but um, no kind of agreement. I don't know if this should be in the proposal or as a separate issue, which is, I think there was general agreement that this should be separate from um, Strimzy, so it shouldn't be added to the cluster operator, I, I think was the consensus. Um, so I can update to reflect that, but I wasn't sure what people's thoughts were in terms of should it be something that's heavily based off of the cluster operator or should it be a standalone Java operator SDK project? I think having it as a standalone project will work. You can definitely get hold of all of the API libraries that you need. Um, I've tested that out. I think the downside of using the Java operator SDK is, um, it is just a, a bit newer and um, like I've found it a little bit tricky to kind of find documentation and work out how to build up um, the operator, but it's such a simple operator that using that approach would cut out a lot of additional code that we would have to have in the project. So that's the pro. If it's going to be a different operator, so in a different project, uh, uh, how are we going to deploy it in the same way that we deploy, I don't know, the canary and the drain cleaner? So a completely different deployment and you have to do by hands or uh, we are going to integrate at some point in streams like we have the user and topic operator it was not clear to me in the if we had the discussion it's not dependent on the kafka cluster so you cannot deploy it in the same way as the user and topic operators uh yes right yeah because it's watching uh different yeah, I mean, okay. it, yeah, it can be used for different Kafka custom resources, right? For different Kafka it, clusters, right? Yeah. Exactly. You can have Kubernetes yeah, yeah, cluster yeah. with multiple Kafka clusters, and then you will have Kafka access resources pointing to different clusters. Yes. So I think it needs to be separate. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I guess the first point to decide is whether we actually want to decide this now. So I think I raised a bit of this discussion on the proposal originally, mm -hmm. and I'm more or less happy with the agreement that it's not part of the cluster operator, but it's separate project. And just to clarify, separate project means <laughs> separate GitHub repo within the Streamsy organization, but it's still part yeah. of Streamsy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm actually happy with this and I do not need to go into more details in the proposal. Okay. But if others want to cover that, then I'm also fine with it. And to be honest, if you ask me, I would say whoever works on it should maybe make the decision. I'm not sure actually if you are planning to work on the implementation gate or if someone else does it, but yeah, I've started the, playing around with the POC, so I'm very happy to work on the implementation. Yeah, then maybe to me it sounds more like you should then maybe choose which way you okay. want to go. Well, I can go ahead and get the proposal updated with those last pieces just to make it clear that it's a standalone um, GitHub repo within Strimzy and that um, I'll rename everything to Kafka Access. Was there any other points that any of the maintainers or people who've reviewed it thought I've missed um, that are still outstanding discussions on that one? 
I'll go for it one last time, but I'm not aware of anything on my side. Yeah, I think I need to go through the comments once more to see whether I forgot something, but I think these were the, the kind of last points which I had and which were discussed there. Cool. Okay, I'll get that updated then, and then hopefully we can get it matched. Yeah, that's the same for me. Thanks, Kate. Okay, anyone, anything else to the service binding stuff? If not, then the next one is the Connect API security. And I will be absolutely honest that I know there was some discussion about certificates, but I'm not up to date, so. I guess I leave it up to Kate or others if there is something you want to discuss now or if we just need more time to catch up. Um, I can certainly share where I feel the proposals got to. So um, I updated it so that the proposal is now to basically extend the Connect API, um, the, sorry, the Connect like resource CRD so that you have an option to be able to secure an end, the endpoint and I've updated it so that the onus is on the user to supply the certificates. I think the only piece that was outstanding was, I know that Tom had had a couple of comments around um, the specific format of the files, so I need to update those. But I think the main question was around whether or not we needed two fields for certificates. So in the current proposal, we have a mechanism for the user to provide the end certificate effectively that they want connect to host as the rest listener certificate but then we also have an option for them to provide the root ca certificate which is the certificate that then the strimsy operators will use when they're trying to call connect and my understanding is that that will only be needed if the root certificate isn't like a well-known certificate that java trusts by default um, and if you're actually using the connectors option, so if the operators are going to try and call Kafka Connect. And the question is, do we need those two separate fields or do we make the user provide one certificate that has the full chain in and then the Kafka Connect operator can pick out the root certificate that it has to trust? I think that was the last question I was aware of. Actually. Yeah, I think I think the second option that I won't try and re-describe um, is probably where we want to land with this. It's my, my feeling. I don't know if anyone disagrees or. So to clarify, the second option being provide a single field for them to put in the certificate. And no, it... no, I meant okay. the first option then. Okay. I mean, we have we have an explicit um, trust store that is only provided when um, you're operating in connector mode where the operator is going to be interacting with the REST API. Is um, literally only the connector mode, Tom? We have the features no, but like if, getting the list of plugins if, and so on. OK. I'm not sure these are tied. To yeah, OK, operator. that's true. I'd forgotten that we had. Yeah, of course, you're right. We've got those other interactions as well. Um, but I still think it makes sense to do that because, because you only need to supply that if you're not, if it's not a, um, if the root CA is not one that's already going to be trusted by the JVM. And and also, if if you imagine getting a certificate, you know, from the normally when you get a certificate, so go on. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't feel up to date with the PR, I'm afraid. So I'm not sure I might say something what's solved there. But I mean, the user will configure a private key and a public key in a PEM format in some secret. 
right? Yeah. And the cluster operator, it doesn't really need a CA file. It can really just take the server certificate public key and use that to connect, right? It, I think it could do that. I think the downside of that approach is that it will mean the user will have to change both certificates every time. Whereas if they were able to provide a CA certificate, then it means that if their certificate changes, they only have to change that one certificate. They don't have to change the CA part because the operator will continue to trust it. Yeah, but... So, I mean, the operator needs to query the certificate anyway in every reconciliation loop, right? So what benefit does the CA give it really? I think it's a benefit to the user in that they don't have to. Well, yeah, yeah they, don't they, have they... To, they don't have to update the CA, right? But if the operator uses yeah. the server public key that public serve directly, then they don't even need to specify the CA. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, it doesn't differ. And does having the CA have really some meaning for the for the rolling update to roll out the new certificate if the user changes it? Yeah, I guess, yeah, normally the reason, my understanding is normally the reason you provide the CA for the client is so that your client doesn't have to change. But like you say, the operator will notice the change regardless. Is it that much of a big step for it to then go update its own trust store as well as? Yeah, I guess the value would be if, if the operator needs to talk with the Connect API before as well as after the rolling update, then it needs to know the old certificate and the new certificate. And if you have a separate CA certificates, then uh, even when you are changing the CAs, you can just add first the new CA. And then, because when the reconciliation starts, the secret will be probably updated with the new certificate, mm -hmm. possibly both private and public key but the connect is still using the old certificate. Yeah. And I think that's where it can have some benefit if you have the CA which can talk with both, right? Yeah, yeah. That's good. I think there's also another benefit is just from a documentation kind of point of view. Um, and if you've got an external client that's talking to it, knowing that this is the set of certificates that you have to trust is, you know, kind of has value, you know, have, separating those out, I mean, has has value for any external clients that you might be pointing at this endpoint. Yeah, to be honest, it's not so usual living uh, in the trust store, the exact certificate that you are getting from the server during the TLS and shake in general, you're kind of quite often having a certificate that was using to sign the server certificate, not the yeah, server certificate itself. Oh. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. 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 For this, I, I, yeah, I, I see what you mean now, Paolo. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry. That so I am for having... reasons, right? That's because you normally trust the CA and don't trust. Yeah the end certificate server necessarily but yeah i'm not sure we really care about it here but i guess the conclusion is that we want to have the ca there yeah yes yeah, it sounds to me like the consensus is it makes sense to have the two separate fields one for the server certificate and one for the trust store yes but by the the one for the server certificate, you mean one for the server certificate path because that could contain intermediate CAs which aren't directly trusted but are needed to form a 
path to the trusted CA in the other field, right? Yes. Not to, you know, complicate things, but let's <laughs> let's make sure this is sufficiently general. So sorry, Tom. You are you are saying that uh, in the in the server certificate you can have a chain of intermediate CA, while the other Correct. field, the CA, the CA field is just the root CA that was used yes. to. Okay. And just to further clarify, we're saying that the server certificate doesn't have to be the complete chain, but it can be a chain if you want it to be. Or do you need to have the complete chain? You need to provide the chain that goes just short of the, the trusted certificate in the other field, in the, the trust store field. Okay. But you've, you've got to provide that chain. Otherwise, when you're authenticating the server in the client, then you're going to say, okay, well, I've got this end entity certificate and I've, I've, I trust this root CA certificate, but I can't build a path between them. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Cool. Okay. So, I will. Sorry. What about on. people with self signed certificates? Do we just tell them to put the public key of the server certificate, which essentially is the CA into the CA field? So they're using a self signed certificate as their end entity certificate? Yeah. Why would you do that? Because you want encryption. I mean, self-signed certificate gives you the same level of encryption as signed certificate, right? The only thing which differs there is a trust. So if you just want to encrypt the connection for whatever reason, then self-signed certificate is completely sufficient. Yeah, it yeah I think it could work. I think you'd have to put the same certificate in both places yeah. to say, yeah, this is the certificate that I'm using and I trust it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I that should work, but we probably need to document it then later so that the users understand yeah. it. Yeah, and it's worth testing for that explicitly if we think people are actually going to do that. Oh, I'm sure they will. People of self science certificates. <laughs> okay, anything else? I think those were the main points from uh, what I can remember. Um, so, yeah, if I update and um, what I'll do in terms of formats and stuff, I'll just go through and be explicit with each of the formats. And as much as possible, I'll keep with the formats that we have elsewhere so that it's so sort of consistent. Um, oh, the only other piece actually that was a, an outstanding discussion that I don't think we got to the bottom of was the um, under the rest listeners um, specifying the type or the protocol. Um, I think we were in agreement that it needed to be an um, that the restlessness had to be an object, but there was some discussion about whether it should be called type and have plain and TLS as the options versus protocol and have HTTP, HTTPS. That was a comment I made, right? Well, yes. about to be an object, uh, I agree. So I was just raising the fact to use the list, but I agree that even for extension, I don't know if we need to add some other fields later be careful Maybe. we screwed it up in the kafka cr already yeah no yeah so it, to be an object is is much better yeah i was just thinking that as jacob said that type could be better than protocol um so i i, I, I don't know i personally was a bit torn i mean the protocol makes a lot of sense there but then there's also many other places where you use where you use type for this or for similar things. So yeah, yeah I I can probably go both ways. 
So, Kate, you were raising the point that uh, uh, type was used for the listeners, right? Yeah, so my last comment on it was, um, I think that type might be confusing because um, this is ultimately a listener and where we've used listeners in the Kafka CR section, type refers to internal versus root versus node port or things like that. It doesn't refer to HTTP, it doesn't refer to the protocol because obviously it's the Kafka protocol. So I wondered if using reusing type in a field that's called listeners would cause confusion and they would think, am I exposing this endpoint internally versus externally? Because we aren't giving them any options at the moment to add a service or a route for this Kafka Connect endpoint. It's just how the endpoint itself is exposed. And I guess in future, we might want to add a type field so that then the connect operator would automatically create a service or a route. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Or even uh, uh, using, uh, if we use a TLS field as we use in the other places, it means that, uh, oh, you can have both, right? So if you set a TLS false, you are enabling just HTTP. If you set TLS true, you should enable HTTP and HTTPS. Maybe it's confusing, right? Yeah, I think the tricky thing with the TLS option is, like you say, they, it makes it tricky to define what happens if you want both a non-secure mm. and a secure endpoint. Um, well, I, I think the REST listeners, I guess, is an array. So you could have each object and then you can just say whether you want it to be TLS or non-TLS. So I think TLS would work and it would line up with rest with the other listeners. Yeah, I'm just thinking about if in the future we decided that we wanted to have some sort of authorization, say on endpoints selectively, for example, mm -hmm. um, then we'd want, you know, that doesn't want to be like a, a third type separate you've got sort of like the protocol part and whether that's tls or not um but then you've got other things at a higher level that you might want to attach to that sort of uh those different endpoints if you like does that make sense yeah i think so yeah. i've i feel like i'm maybe leaning towards having just a Boolean field called TLS that says whether that particular listener is secure or not. So do you all agree on TLS? Yeah, it's fine with me. I prefer that over type or protocol. Does that align with what you were saying, Tom, around extending it? Yeah, I think so. At least partly. Um, I'll, I'll read what we've got and I'll see if I can form any clearer thoughts, but I think I'm broadly happy with, with, what, with that at the moment. Okay. I think that was it then on that one. Okay. If nobody has anything else, then the last proposal which is opened right now is about the managed identity authentication. So uh, I don't think there's any update since last time, but if you follow Slack, then uh, Mayan, I, I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, uh, is working on a POC, so you can follow that in the StreamZ dev channel if you want. So I'm not sure anyone has anything to this one. I guess probably not. So, and since these are all the proposals we have, it's probably nobody has any other proposals to discuss or Okay, then uh, 
just a reminder that next week is the KubeCon China and we have the office hours there. Paolo, you keep that still in mind? Yeah. It's uh, really early in the morning for us, right? Yeah. It's 7.45. Well, not for me, but not for yeah. me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so go to, to sleep earlier the, the day before. I can't do that. Uh, so uh, you are making the preparation for for it, right? Yes, I I I will do. Even if uh, the first three days of next week I will be off, but anyway, yes. Okay, not sure anyone has anything else to this. And then the last thing which I added there is uh, issue triage planning. So I think we have quite a lot of different issues uh, on GitHub. And I think it would be useful to go through them and uh, think about which of those are useless now and too old and should be closed, which of them we want to keep. And maybe we can use this to fill in the good start and help wanted labels because uh, yeah, there's not that much good stuff in uh, in those. So yeah, I would probably, so my idea was that we should maybe have some separate meetings. I don't know, one hour per week or one hour every other week or something like that, where we could go through some of them always and close them, update them, decide on them, set the labels uh, right down there if you think that proposal with some more details would be needed for it and so on and try to clean it up a bit or not necessarily close everything but uh, if nothing uh, set the right labels and so on and i was maybe thinking that we should try to do the enhancements first and then there's a bunch of unlabeled issues then there are a lot of bugs where a lot of them are probably old and outdated and there may be just some questions and then there are some docs things as well. Does that sound reasonable or? Yeah, I'm up for that. Do we want to start before Christmas with it or do we want to keep it for January? Let's start with new things on New Year. <laughs> so, first January. Yeah, I send this, year, I, I, this I will year. Send the invite. This year was uh, already bad as 2020. So let's let's hope for a better year. So see you on Saturday, I guess. <laughs> no, okay then. Uh, yeah, I will try to think about it, prepare some list to keep track what we will look at. And I think we can use Zoom for it as we use for the community calls. And if needed, I think we can record them as well and put them on YouTube. And we can also share it then on Slack so that everyone who wants to comment on some of those can join as well. So it's not something that we are asking to CNCF to put into their official calendar, right? I would not do that because I think we should do it more ad hoc. So I yeah. don't think we will, we have like 250 issues approximately open right now. So we won't go through that in one hour. But I think once we clean it up, there's no need to do this regularly. So I think we should do it ad hoc. And I think we can use the Zoom account to do ad hoc meetings as well. So I don't think that should be a that should be a problem. At least I hope so. Do we want to touch any of these issues outside these calls? I'm just looking at the doc ones and some are dating back to 2018. So maybe the, some of these could be closed without yeah, any I, discussion. I think if it's clear, then yeah, you can. they can be just closed. I don't think that's necessarily mm -hmm. a problem. But for example, with the enhancements, there's a lot of things which yeah, we just said, let's track it. And they are not necessarily obviously outdated. 
So I think there it's a bit more complicated than uh, with some of the bugs or with some of the docs issues. But yeah, I think if you see something what's clearly outdated, then yeah, that should be just closed. Okay, right, thanks. So it sounds like we have a plan for this. Yep, sounds good to me. Okay, and that's it for the agenda. But if anyone has anything else they want to raise, we have still some time to go through it. Uh, I, I just had some uh, like a question about the uh, the warning cruise control PR which I had opened in. Uh, so so I was addressing the comments on that PR where uh, we were trying to add the warnings to all the states. But uh, actually the thing which the trouble which I was facing was that while writing the test, I just figured out that uh, the thing was that uh, for like in general, if it's say that if the the rebalance state is like in proposal ready state so at that time uh like mostly most of the annotations like the refresh ones the approve ones all of them are like they can be applied at that time and the others too so it was not a problem but if we are in a ready state so the the problem is that if we are in a ready state, we can only apply the refresh annotation. And at that time, we can't apply either approve, either stop. We can't apply all these uh, statements, all these annotations. So uh, the problem is that at that time, these appro approve annotations are also wrong. But according to the code change, which I made, it was basically that if a person uses some sort of a wrong annotation, like like for example, Dave or maybe some some other stuff. So at that time, uh, like we were keeping the annotation as Dave and not doing anything and then popping up the warning in the conditions. But uh, when it comes to this, that uh, your resource is in ready state and now you are uh, trying to apply the approve annotation, but you can't do it. So uh, at that time, the code which I have on my branch it, it, it basically still like applies that annotation and just makes it null like which was which is the thing which was happening earlier so i i even asked paulo regarding that that uh, would it be like should we have a separate pr for all this because i guess if we try to add the warnings to all the states then probably i'll have to change the the check annotation method, I guess, which is basically uh, checking everything. So I'll have to write more conditions that if the rebalance state is proposal ready or maybe in ready state or in stop state. So there might be certain, like a lot of cases in that case. So it won't be an easy one, I would say. So, um, yeah, I got your message. Sorry, Shubham, but uh, I. I didn't get actually the, the 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 specific problem. I mean, the the PR is about uh, uh, updating the Kafka rebalance when uh, resource when you when this resource is in a specific state that could be I don't know proposal ready ready or uh, something like that proposal pending etc. And uh, you are applying. Uh, it, an annotation that doesn't make sense for that state, right? And we want to yeah. upgrade the condition with the warning. So yeah. now you are mentioning that uh, even in the ready state, of course, you can just apply the approve annotation to, to, to run cruise control to do the rebalance. So I guess that even in this case, if someone, I don't know, apply another annotation, even a value that is not supported, not just for the state, but just applying full bar, you have to add the warning on the condition and uh, just stay the Kafka rebalance resource as it is, so in ready. 
Yeah, so, so suppose if the person applied approve annotation on a ready state. So basically it is also wrong because in ready state, you can only apply the refresh annotation. So that is the case which I was asking because my PR can target that issue if you are passing something like foo bar, that sort of a wrong annotation. But what if you apply, like if you put in approve annotation, like it is also wrong because you can't apply approve. But in that should be kind of the same. So the, the, the warning should be something like, uh, yeah, ap approve, well, not so long, of course, but uh, we know that approve is a valid annotation, but not for the state that Kafka rebalances. This is what, what you mean, right? So you're not uh, just handling wrong annotation in the sense that uh, the annotation that you are putting is outside the set of uh, uh, valid annotations. But even if you apply a valid annotation, but in a wrong state of the resource, I guess that the warning should be there as well. Yeah, and, and for that only I was saying that I might have to I like change some of the methods like I have to add case for that. Like right now, I guess the rebalance annotation method, which is present there is not doing much. So basically maybe I'll have to add some cases there that if the, this is in ready state or in this state. So then you have to like, like for example, if you are in ready state, so probably what we can do is that uh, you, if you, if you pass on approve, then we will possibly check that if it is in ready state, and if you have passed the proof, then we will probably change it to like, we will uh, update it with an unknown one and like update it to unknown and then like pop that warning that you have passed the proof and this is wrong. So in that way, but it will require a lot of casing, I would say, because you have to basically check everything that if it isn't ready and then you have this approve. So this is also wrong if you are in ready and if you have uh, refresh, like uh, stop, this, that is also wrong. So that was a thing. Like there are many cases when it comes to that. Well, I, I should check the code again, uh, but I remember that for each state, it's checking the annotation that uh, you are on the, when you are in a specific state and then there is a default one, which is not one of that annotation. Uh, you are handling there, for example, adding the warnings, if I remember correctly. So yeah, yeah. I should check the code again just to, to 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 get what are the problems that you are dealing with specifically yeah. in this yeah. case. Yeah. So Paolo, you will have a look at it. Yeah, I will uh, double check with Shubham offline maybe and. Okay, anyone, anything else? In that case, I guess we are finished. So thanks for coming everyone and see you next time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. thanks folks. See you folks, bye. Uh -huh. Thanks, bye.